Hello there, my beautiful, lovely, delightful internet friends. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me here today on Trauma Talk. If you haven't met me before, you haven't visited before, my name is Jo, and today I wanna to talk a little bit about the V word, the terrifying one, the very, very frightening, soul-crushing, horrifying vulnerability. So I'm a bit of a hypocrite. Vulnerability is something that I promote, that I advocate for, that I find absolutely one of the most beautiful things in the world, to be vulnerable and to connect with another person. It's, it's frightening, it takes a lot of courage to get there, but when we can do it, beautiful things can happen. However, in that same breath, I can also say that vulnerability is something that I have actively worked against for the majority of my life. In recent years, it's gotten a little bit better, but I still find myself stopping short whenever I'm with people who I love, who I trust, of actually really opening up and being real, being vulnerable, exposing who I really am. There's always at least a little bit of a wall up. And I've been talking about this recently in counseling. I wanted to share with you something that my counselor suggested that I think about, that, that I have been thinking about for a couple weeks now. And as soon as I really started breaking it down in my head, vulnerability became a lot less terrifying. And if there is anything that can make this concept less scary, I think it's worth exploring because I know for me personally, it's like the one thing that makes me feel like my stomach is gonna fall out and or I might throw up and or I might pass out, right? So let's talk about it today. As we dive in, please hit that subscribe button and that like button if you feel extra generous. It helps this channel I'll get out to more people and helps my channel and I'd appreciate it. So I'm only speaking for myself, but I think for many of us, especially if we've experienced trauma at the hands of other people, vulnerability becomes incredibly difficult because safety and security were taken from you, trust was broken, it becomes even more difficult than it normally is to place your trust in someone with something that's really you, with a piece of you that they could potentially use to hurt you. And so in a lot of situations, I've never allowed myself to really be vulnerable enough to get hurt. I can be vulnerable up to a certain level, but it always shuts off right before I actually feel like I'm in danger. And by that I mean really exposing a piece of me that could really hurt. But the problem with that that's developed in my life and I've seen in many other lives as well is that you start feeling incredibly disconnected because when you're not honest with people, when you don't share who you really are or what you're really thinking, when you don't have those moments of true connection and vulnerability, you feel really alone. <laughs> like you feel lost and broken, like no one gets you and no one understands, but also no one's really been given the chance to. Truly. And that's where I found myself over the past few months. Even though I have incredible friends and a great support system, I have found myself feeling so utterly disconnected and just lost and alone, even though I'm not. So we've been talking about this whole concept of disconnection and vulnerability for a little while now, my counselor Jamie and I. And a couple weeks ago, as I was expressing feeling disconnected and you know, a friend had said something to me and I really wanted to tell her what I really thought because it was hurtful, but I wasn't gonna do that because it's not her job to have to deal with my emotions. And also it's really freaking scary to do that because then what if she doesn't care? What if she doesn't listen to me? What if she rejects who I really am? Like all of this. And my counselor brought up this discussion of what vulnerability really is. Is. I don't know about you, but I've always thought of vulnerability as like opening myself up to potential hurt and harm and like handing over a piece of myself to someone else to hopefully take care of, but also you have no way to know if they're actually gonna take care of it because they might just hurt you with it because that's happened before, right? My primary concept of vulnerability has always been for someone else. Like I'm being vulnerable for this person or for this relationship. And my counselor challenged me on that. She said in her experience and research and in her mind, vulnerability is really more about you than it is about the other person. She said it's kind of like 75, 25. And I balked at this idea because I was like, no, being vulnerable is like, it's, it's for someone else. And that's why it's so damn scary because you don't know what they're gonna do with it. But the more we discussed this and the more we thought about it, I began to realize that if I think of vulnerability as something I am doing for myself. Yes, it's an invitation to the other person to enter into that with me. It's an invitation to see who I really am and know I don't know what the response is gonna be. But if I start looking at vulnerability, this big scary word for me, as something that I'm doing for myself first and foremost, it becomes a lot less frightening to me. And the reason for that is because the outcome no longer determines how I feel about it, right? Like if the point of vulnerability is for the other person to have a positive affirming response, if that is the primary purpose, you have no way of controlling that. You have no way of knowing what their response is gonna be when you're vulnerable. And so the risks are very high 
But on the flip side, if you look at vulnerability as something you're primarily doing for yourself, because this is honestly who you are, it is a good practice to be real with ourselves and to be real with those around us. At least for me, it really started to feel like that risk was lower. Seeing vulnerability as a good thing or as a success was no longer really dependent on the other person's reaction. It was dependent on what I feel like is actually true to me, what I feel like is true to who I am and to what I wanna say and to what I wanna express. Flipping the script from being like, it's, it's like a piece of me I'm handing over and they might crush it, Yes, there is still fear and there is still pain there because people cannot have a great reaction, cannot have a good response when you're opening up, when you're being authentic, when you're being vulnerable. But if I approach this knowing that 75% of the reason I'm doing it is not for their response, it's for me. You know, it is for the relationship, but it's for me first and foremost. I'm not as terrified of what their response is gonna be because I know at the end of the day, I've generally accomplished what I set out to do. I wanted to share this because this is something I've been thinking over and over and over again for the past few weeks because I really care about being real with the people around us. I care about being connected. I care about showing people who I really am and them showing me who they really are. But in so many endless situations, I've been unwilling to actually go there because I'm terrified, I'm petrified of what their response is gonna be. And like that 75, 25 comparison, right? Like, like part of it is still for the other person. Part of it is about their response and what they do with it. But if most of it is for me, that is something that I can control. That's something that I can get my hands around. That's something that's less frightening because I don't feel like I'm simply at the mercy of someone's reaction, which I cannot entirely be prepared for. You know, you don't get to control other people. All you get to do is make choices for yourself. So I'm gonna continue playing around with this idea of vulnerability and, and figuring out new ways to exercise it. I wanna be very clear that I don't feel like I've arrived on this concept. I don't think I ever actually will. Vulnerability is really scary to me and I'm hoping to sort of lower that fear and I've noticed that as I've begun changing the narrative about how I think about vulnerability, some of that fear has started decreasing. I found myself more willing to actually be real with people, to share what I'm really feeling, what I'm really thinking, where I really am and invite them to do the same because I love it. I love it when that connection and that exchange happens. It's what makes us human. Like I feel like it's the point, the reason we're here sometimes. So I'm curious if anyone else has found themselves in the same boat. Like, are you terrified of vulnerability like I am or is it something that you feel pretty comfortable with? And does flipping the script, does changing the narrative around who it's for also help you? I know it's really been helping me and it's something I'm gonna continue to sort of ruminate on, to puzzle over, to think on. And it's been a really good exercise for me and maybe it will be for you too if you feel like that resonates with you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me for a few minutes here and talking about the terrifying the vulnerability word. I really appreciate you being here. To my patrons over on Patreon, I cannot thank you enough for supporting this channel and my other channel, Footless Joe. I am so grateful for your generosity. I do not take it for granted. If you are interested in joining my Patreon, Patreon is basically a place where you can support your favorite creators and in return for that, you get some cool perks like behind the scenes videos and exclusive videos and updates and things of that nature. So check it out if you're interested on screen or down below. But to you watching this video right now, thank you so much for spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today. You could be anywhere in the world doing anything and you chose to hang out with me and that means a lot to me, so thank you. I love you guys, I'm thinking about you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.